You're listening to the Craig Proctor Real Estate Show. Each week, I'm going to be interviewing top realtors from coast to coast to give you a backstage pass on how they've created their amazing real estate empires and how you can copy them. Hi, everyone. This is real estate coach Craig Proctor, and welcome to the Craig Proctor Real Estate Show. Today, our special guest is superstar Todd Walters from Atlanta, Georgia, entrepreneur, one of the top 10 realtors in the United States. Uh, uh, he's also co-founder of Your Home Soul Guaranteed Realty. Todd, welcome to the Craig Proctor Real Estate Show. No, it's a pleasure to be here today, Craig. Thanks for having me, man. Uh, you know, Todd, you and I were uh, talking about uh, exactly what we're going to cover today, and we had to go into this big announcement by NAR. It's a bee's nest. Oh, my God. I said to Todd, I said, I went live on Facebook um, last Wednesday, a couple of days before this announcement by the NAR, where, of mm. course, I had no idea that I, I knew it was going to be settled, but I had no idea it was going to be like right around that time. And this uh, this thing blew up uh, on social media. We got people that are upset. We got people that are excited. We got uh, people, oh, they threw it. The NAR threw us under the bus. Emotions all all over the place. Todd, what's your take on this? Well, you know, it's been a long time coming, quite frankly, and uh, no big surprise to you and I, uh, for sure, um, over the last, what is it now, two, three decades of working with buyers and sellers, uh, pretty much whatever an industry norm or standard is, the way to get rich in real estate is to uh, legally and ethically maybe disrupt those industry norms and standards. So, you know, negoti setting, negotiating, collecting your fee uh, when working with buyers is a Craig Proctor system way. I learned that from you many decades ago that served my life and my real estate sales team and now these real estate companies very, 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 very well. And uh, when you go down the road of doing that, you also learn how to take on a seller's property and develop a system for selling the home versus relying on the MLS and buyer's agents at all. So uh, this is nothing really new for us, but we did see it coming uh, because, hey, when you walk into a seller's house and you sort of coerce them or convince them, manipulate them, I don't know what the right word is. Uh, the courts didn't like it. But when you walk into a seller's house and say, hey, you've got to pay a real estate agent that uh, that represents someone else. And in fact, they're going to work against your interest. Uh, you know, eventually that's going to catch up with you as a business practice. And that's what happened. Well, yeah, associations like the NER can have all the rules they want, but the rules of associations, whether it's a homeowner association, whatever, they have to actually comply with the laws of the land. So that's what happened here. You guys know the story. Uh, NAR lost. Uh, they were uh, they had to pay a penalty of one point eight billion dollars, and there was a threat that that was going to be tripled. Um, anyway, they settled for four hundred and eighteen million dollars, and the compromise was that the commission that goes to the buyer agent on MLS that field is gone. Mm -hmm. sometime in July, that field is gone. Now, uh, Todd, you and I are, are talking about, uh, well, most agents uh, are going to be in shock over this. Uh, two reasons you said, and uh, I love how you said it. Okay, so let me make sure I got this right. You said reason number one is most agents had a hard time getting the buyer to work with them when they could say, I do all this stuff for you and it's free. They couldn't, they couldn't get buyers by saying to the buyer, I do this and this and this and this and this, and all I ask for is your loyalty. It's free. I don't charge you anything, and you're never obligated to buy. They struggled with that. They couldn't even get a buyer contract signed saying, I'm free. Now that the, now that the agent has to convince the buyer to pay them mm -hmm. for the same services, uh, a lot of real estate agents won't know how to handle that. Then you added this other point. You said, yeah, that's one problem for sure. The other problem is most listing agents totally relied on MLS, on commission sharing, and that was their entire marketing plan. In other words, I list the house. I don't know how to find a buyer for my property. I don't have to worry about it. I slap the listing on MLS and uh, we uh, do a commission share and some mm -hmm. other agent does all the work and brings the buyer. Okay, well, that commission sharing is going away. Uh, many agents won't know how to sell their listings without MLS. They won't know how to do it um, without um, 
the way it's worked for them in the past. So um, uh, I, I did a uh, webinar on this on Monday. Uh, the thing blows up, uh, gone viral. People uh, all over the place, NAR sold us out, people mad, some people happy, uh, a lot of people very anxious about this. Now, this is nothing new to Todd Walters and I. Todd, if you can show the book, please. Yes. I, I think this right was here. in yeah, 2015, I believe. Todd and I wrote a book. And it was called The Death of the Traditional Real Estate Agent and the Rise of the Super Profitable Sales Team. We predicted this. It's just like eight or nine years ago. Go read the book. You can find it on Amazon. And there no, there's no question uh, that is very difficult for the solo agent, the traditional agent, uh, using traditional norms and standards to uh, be effective in today's market. So here's what we did way back then. We counseled our top agents uh, to give away zero on MLS. That's what they were giving away. So they're not involved, weren't involved in any of these lawsuits. They would list a house at 6%, they would offer or 7% or whatever they wanted, and they would offer zero uh, uh, to the co-op agent. Of course, they got all kinds of flack for that. As it turns out, we were exactly right. Um, and of course, agents would get upset and they're like, why is there zero? Is this some kind of mistake? And we would explain to buyer brokers, um, this is a good thing for you because you're able to negotiate your own fee. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we'll show you how to negotiate whatever fee that you want. Instead of, uh, how many of you guys had a problem with the fact that when you worked with a buyer, you weren't able to negotiate your fee or you were, but you, you were able to always, but you weren't, you were just accepting whatever was being offered on MLS. So we have been teaching our members, Craig Proctor members, how to negotiate their fee, um, not what's offered on MLS, but negotiate whatever fee you want and get paid through uh, the proceeds of sale, which is exactly how it's going to work. So mm -hmm. we're so many years ahead of what's happening. But Todd, you and I go back like, like 30 years. We've always been years and years ahead of what's happening out there. We were then, we are now, and we will be ahead of things going into the future. Mm -hmm. So um, our members really are like, uh, they couldn't care less about this. It hasn't changed business at all for them. No, no, not at all. It's just another day getting up and selling more homes than just about anybody else in the real estate industry. So, uh, but when you think about it, it is a, a great business practice if you're an agent and you list a home uh, to put the uh, to put the property on the market and offer zero to a buyer's agent. It's a, it's a good business practice for the seller. It's a great business practice for the buyer's agents and a really good practice for the uh, actual listing agent as well. And a couple of reasons why. Okay. Number one, um, when the, when the commission is at zero, it doesn't mean there's no commission. It just means that there's no limit to the commission that the buyer's agent can negotiate uh, for themselves uh, based on the deal that they have with their buyer. So, over the years of of selling real estate, when the when the when the listing agent and the seller get together and they decide they're going to offer a fee uh, in the MLS or out there in the world to a buyer's agent, the fee that they conjure up together is a fee that they believe it's worth to them. So, but the buyer has their own hopes and dreams and desires and things that they want. So, obviously, what the buyer wants from their own real estate agent, the buyer's agent is probably worth a lot more. In other words, it's more valuable. The buyer's agent's more valuable to the buyer than they are to the seller and the listing agent. So um, not been a real proponent of, of sticking a fee in MLS because it does send a signal to the buyer's agents that, hey, there's a limit to how much you can earn. Um, and we decided the limit is based on what it's worth to us um, irregardless of what the buyer may want. So yeah. yeah and and is... also a beef that some industry watchers had is uh, they were accusing real estate agents of steering buyers to certain homes because some homes paid the agent more than other homes. Um, mm. So uh, the answer to that is how this is going to work now and how, what we've been, you and I have been doing with our members for years, which is mm -hmm. give the agent, the ability to negotiate their own fee and they get that fee, whether it's 2%, 3%, 4% or 5%, whatever it is, they get that fee regardless of what home they sell. Yep. There is yep. no motivation for the agent to steer 
uh, a buyer uh, for one to one property or another property because they're literally getting the, the same uh, commission that is baked into the cake. It's negotiated in the buyer agreement. Now, I know a lot of you watching don't know how to do this. And uh, Todd, you and I will have to decide today how much we want to share. <laughs> so we, yeah. uh, so I want I want everyone watching this to think about this. You got a couple months. And the reason there's a couple of months, they're going to have to make changes to the paperwork. And uh, for example, the buyer agreements right now have a little sp space in there where you can type in your commission. And then it says, or you can just accept whatever is being offered on MLS. Obviously, that'll have to be edited out because there won't be any commission being offered on MLS to the buyer broker. Okay. That is part of the compromise that is going away. It's a done deal. Uh, oh, uh, here's another thing. A lot of agents are saying, well, then why do we even need MLSs? If an MLS is defined as a commission sharing portal and there's no longer commission sharing allowed, what's the future of MLSs, Todd? Mm, yeah, it pretty much is just a syndication platform. And uh, what I mean by that is if, you, if you're a listing agent, list a house, you jam it in MLS um, and there's no real estate commission being offered up to the buyer's agent, uh, essentially it's just a syndication platform. So, so it's like Zillow. Yeah, you're going to get your, it's, it's, it's to get the property on the Zillow, realtor.com, yeah. and, and out there syndicated to wherever you want um, in hopes that you would generate um, buyers, like people would come to you. So, um, and, yeah, I'm, it remains to be seen. So, crafty Craig Proctor members who are really good at marketing, they really understand marketing, uh, know how to position their, their properties on the market so that it attracts more prospects even in syndication than the average real estate agent does. So um, so if you're going to be successful here long-term in this business, then yeah, you got to get really, really, really good at marketing and understand how all that works uh, to create more demand for your for your properties over and above anybody else's. It's, it's kind of always been the case, but again, most real estate agents struggle, not necessarily uh, with jamming a home in the MLS, it's they struggle with getting customers. So when they get a customer and they list the home in the MLS and it sells really fast, somebody else come along and sell that, they still complain and have no customers. So they don't have a system for using the listing, for example, to get more business. Uh, they use the listing basically just to get a commission check versus the Craig Proctor way, which is using the listing to get more listings. So um, so yeah, there's, there's going to be a need and demand for real estate agents out there who are serious about their career and their future. Uh, they're going to be seeking out people like uh, you, Craig, uh, to like, okay, help me uh, develop a system uh, for not just getting customers, but for doing that as well, using customers to get more business and and so that I've, I got more predictability in my business and to get paid very, very well uh, for providing that exceptional value. Okay, question, Todd, uh, a prediction. How many real estate agents are gone in July when the buyer commission goes away in MLS? When the buyer needs to get paid directly from the buyer, they got to convince the buyer to mm -hmm. pay them, how many real estate agents won't know how to do that, won't have the skill, the ability, the capability to do that? How many real estate agents are gone? One in four, one in three? What's your prediction? It's Yeah, it's definitely going to be a big number. It's hard to hard to imagine it can get any worse, like where you've got 80 to 87% of all real estate agents quitting the business every five years now. So what happens is they quit, a tremendous chunk of them quit every few years. But they're replaced with new people coming in. So I think the quitting is still going to continue. It's the new people getting into the business now have heard and, and seen like, ah, maybe it's not so, maybe it's not the greatest thing that I thought it was. And they move in a different direction uh, in terms of career or whatever it is they're picking to do now. Um, yes. Um, I think a lot of people watch reality TV. They watch these uh, real estate agent reality TV shows. And I think, well, this is easy. Exactly. Uh, I'm just going to drive uh, you know, my Ferrari or my Lamborghini to uh, to networking parties. Uh, not really like that, folks. Uh, this is the real world. Exactly. Uh, okay. Uh, so I'm talking to Todd Walters here. If you joined us late, give us your comments, folks. Uh, type your comments into, uh, into uh, chat right now. Okay, give us your comments. Um, what do you think of all of this? Where do you guys stand on this? Do you agree with what we're saying? Do you disagree with what you're saying? It, I mean, this is a conversation, right? Um, how many of you are all for this or perhaps not really bothered by this? And mm -hmm. how many of you are kind of nervous about this? There's a lot of uncertainty and you're not sure uh, how to handle this. Let us know your questions. 
and your comments here um, so uh, we can have a dialogue about this. Mm -hmm. uh, but unless you've been hiding under a rock, uh, what we've been talking about is uh, commission sharing is dead on the MLS. The field that offers you a commission when you represent the broker is going away. Okay, that is done. So now you've got to figure out how you're going to get paid directly through the buyer. Now, there's two ways you could do this. Here's way number one. Okay, method number one is you could say to your buyer, um, hi, Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, um, I charge 3% and you're buying a million dollar home. So you got to stroke me a check for $30,000. Okay, how would that conversation go? How many buyers might say, well, the heck with you, I'm just going to call the listing agent. That's the way it works in other countries, right? Like Australia, they have a Zillow-like public website. Uh, there is no uh, commission sharing happening over there in these other countries. Uh, this only happens in the United States and Canada. So um, a buyer in Australia typically looks at this Zillow-type website. They find the house. They call the agent that has the listing, and they buy the house. Now, could they have their own representation? Yes, they could, mm -hmm. but they have to pay for it. And mm -hmm. many Australian home buyers are like, yeah, I'm not going to pay for that. So let's go back to you folks. You've got a buyer and they want to buy a million dollar home. Up until now, you didn't have to worry about it, right? You were getting two and a half or 3%. Even at two and a half, you were making uh, $25,000 uh, to sell a house, this million dollar house. And this million dollar house is probably a home the buyer found themselves on the internet. See, a lot of buyers today are like, well, what do I need an agent for? I, I can find the homes by myself. I don't need an agent. And I'd yeah. prefer to uh, find the, as much information as I can before I speak to a salesperson, just like most of you would prefer to look at Auto Trader or look at the car dealership uh, website to see what they have in inventory before you walk into the dealership. You're not looking for a car salesperson. In fact, many of us, if we could buy the car without the salesperson, we'd rather do it that way. Well, it's the same thing in real estate. The search begins online. So we coach you guys up on how do you show up online when people Google your city and real estate, do you even show up? And um, a big change that's happening here is people don't answer the phone, right? So you buy these leads and you're trying to get them on the phone and you can't get them on the phone. And now you're like, well, what do I do now? If I can't get them on the phone, I can't tell them who I, who I am or what I do or what makes me different and better. So we have a solution for that. We show you how to push your marketing out online and pre-sell the buyers and sellers so they do know who you are and what you do and what makes you different and better. They know about your services. And the new call to action, of course, is they call you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so method number one of getting paid. Okay, well, method number one just went away. Okay, that's <laughs> like, it's been offered. Okay, so uh, the next, uh, what we just talked about is, uh, okay, so the buyer has to pay you directly. Or would this sound better? You say to the buyer, my services are 3% or 4% or whatever they are. And you write that into the buyer agreement. And you say to the buyer, but we're still going to get the seller to pay for it. Now, you guys don't know how to do that. And we're not going to show you how to do that on our, uh, our podcast here today. Uh, but uh, trust us on this. We wrote the book. Uh, we have... Um, Members that have been with us for 20 or 30 years, uh, some of them are top level uh, members, pay us $40,000 a year for coaching, but they are the most successful real estate agents uh, in the world. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Todd and I coach, uh, there's nobody coaches more millionaire agents or created, created not just coach, created more millionaire agents uh, than Todd and I over the last 20 years. So we're going to offer you some information though, uh, so you can get some help on this. But basically, the way we're going to do this going forward is the good news is, is you get to negotiate your fee with the buyer, whatever you're worth. Now, I know some of you are like, well, um, you know, the more I make, um, the, the price is going to go up for the house. Look, unless you want to work for free, because we do have, I said to Todd before we get started, we do have real estate agents say, well, you know, if the buyer has to pay a commission, uh, the, you know, uh, that's going to take their down payment away. Uh, it'll it'll hurt their ability to buy. Well, some of you say to me, I got into real estate. I just want to help people. I got into real, I just want to help people. Well, do it for free then. 
Don't charge the buyer any commission. There you go. But you won't stay in business that long. Okay. So this is fair. If you're the best architect in your city, you command the highest fee, right? If you're the best surgeon or the best attorney in your city, you command the highest fee. So we show you how to negotiate your fee and how to get the seller to pay for it. So the buyer's not paying, you know, writing you a check. Mm -hmm. Now, the other thing that Todd and I were talking about, um, maybe it's better to get some listings right now, guys. Okay, if you don't like what we're talking about with the buyer end, why don't you just get more listings? Well, Craig, you're a genius. People say, well, how do I get more listings? Well, we have a free report on how to do this. I don't know if you guys can see this here. Probably mm -hmm. not very good. Uh, but this free report is how to get listings in this volatile market. If you want this free report on how to get listings and an explanation of what's going on here, just drop your email address uh, into the comments here, and we'll get this free report out on how to get more listings in this volatile marketplace. Todd, before we get started, you and I were talking about what's likely going to happen now is the listing commissions are going to go up. Yeah, for sure. You know, like I've been reading and following this, you know, you and I have for years now since uh, this war has been going on around this business practice. And, uh, and it was pretty obvious, like the 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 court or the we wouldn't say the courts, but we'll say the pundits, you know, we'll say, okay, now commissions, houses are going to be more affordable, commissions are going to go down, and I'm like, mm, I don't think so. I think they're actually going to go up now, especially for the agents who are representing the sellers for obvious reasons. Uh, number one, if um, if you've got to do more work to try to find a customer for the seller's house, you're going to have to fund that work. And, uh, and secondly, you've got to do the work once it goes under contract, especially if you're doing both ends of the deal, you got to take care of the buyer and ha help them with all their stuff. So you got work to find the prospect to buy the house and you got to help the, this deal get to closing. So all that work increase uh, is going to equal, like you got to get paid more money in order to pull that off and consistently deliver the value that, um, that needs to happen for that deal to get to closing and you get your five-star review. So yeah, of course it's, probably going to push commissions up. And, and and quite frankly, Craig, for Craig Proctor members uh, that have been doing this for many, many, many years, they they do make a lot more money, a lot more than the average real estate agent does. They're the highest paid real estate agents uh, as a percentage of sale in the world today. So if you like the idea of giving yourself a pay raise, then you definitely want to like at least grab the free report and dig in a little bit deeper here so you can uh, make the necessary change in your business to you know, to, to, to be one of those people in the marketplace that helps more sellers. That was so well said. I just want to repeat what you said, make sure everybody gets it. Todd's argument here is the listing commission is going to go up. It's going to be easier for you to negotiate a higher uh, commission when you're working with sellers. First of all, the part you keep will be higher for sure. You're not giving away half to a buyer broker. That will be illegal. Um, but we can argue as a listing agent, as Todd said, you're going to do much more work. You can't just slap the listing on MLS and have it commission shared anymore and let the other agents, uh, the other agents aren't going to get paid on MLS to sell it. You're going to have to do some heavy duty marketing to get your listing sold. It's going to be harder for you to get your listing sold. You're going to have to invest more time in marketing. You have to have better training on how do I market my listing so they sell. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, number two, since you, in effect, are the listing agent and now the buyer agent, you're doing all the work of the buyer agent, all the way through closing the inspections, everything that happens, handling the whole thing. So how many of you would agree? Let me know in comments. How many of you agree we deserve uh, a higher listing fee if you're doing all the work? Um, many buyers, of course, will just call the listing agent versus, you know, stroking a check for 20 or 30 or 40,000, especially first time buyers, mm -hmm. right? First time buyers are like, uh, hang on a minute. I just spent three years saving up my $20,000 deposit and you, the real estate agent, want it, right? Mm -hmm. How's that going to fly? Um, yeah, so listings are are going to be uh, really important for us to drill down on those, but you're going to have to have the skill set to get the listing, negotiate the fee with, with the seller. And what's the use of getting a listing if you don't know how to market it to get a buyer? Mm -hmm. You guys need to, th it's a big point that Todd's making here. Because many of us haven't had to worry about that. For many real estate agents, I'm sorry, their marketing plan is get the listing, slap it on MLS, and let someone let the other agents do the work. 
No, the other agents aren't doing the work anymore. It's your listing. You need to market it. This is how it works in other countries, right? This is what's happening now. So we can not like it. We can fight it. Or we can say it is what it is. Yeah. Massive right? benefits, but there's massive benefits in doing that. So if you're a real estate agent watching right now, and let's say there were no MLS and you were to list Craig Proctor's house. Okay. You're taking on Craig Proctor's property. You're taking responsibility for getting it sold. There's no MLS. Pretend there's not. Like, what would you do? What exactly would you do? And immediately you start thinking about things you would do. And you probably develop a list of things to do. And it's like, well, why wouldn't you go, then go do that. And likely when you go do those things, you generate a lot of prospects versus just jamming an MLS and generating no prospects. So it's going to be better for people who lean in and embrace this uh, way of doing things for sure. And, uh, but you need, uh, I'd recommend you find a guide to help you uh, navigate all that. Um, no better place than the Craig Proctor system. Obviously I'm very biased because uh, my life become great as a result of it. Thank you, Craig. We are and, very biased. We've, yeah. we've, uh, Todd and I have put our life's work into this. And, and by the way, if you want to meet up with Todd and I, if you guys are in the Toronto area, you don't have to be in the Toronto area. You can fly in from wherever. We have agents literally flying in from all over North America to the Craig Proctor Conference. It's going to be on April the 3rd. So like a couple of weeks from now. Okay. Uh, Wednesday, April the 3rd in Toronto. If you want to get more information, go to craigproctor.com. Go to craigproctor.com, click on Super Conference, and you can register there and you can spend uh, the day uh, with Todd and I and 400 superstar realtors from all over the United States and Canada. We're congregating in a couple of weeks in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. You can get yourself registered by going to craigproctor.com. Mm -hmm. Okay, option number two. You say, okay, well, I can't make it to Toronto or those dates don't work. Book a call with me. Now, you won't be talking to me. You'll be talking to my team. And you might be thinking, well, if I book this call, is this some kind of total sales pitch? No, we don't need to sell you on anything because we have the answers to what you need. Just give us an opportunity to ask you a few questions about your business and how you're going to go about things with these changes that have been forced upon us. And we'll show you what we do. Okay, now we'll show you what we do. We're not going to show you how to do it. We'll just show you the results. We'll show you ample proof. And then you can decide... Is the Craig Proctor way a better way? Is it true that this Craig Proctor guy has created more millionaire agents than any other coach or trainer or guru? Is it true that within 36 months of Craig Proctor getting his real estate license, he was named the number one REMAX agent in the world? Is it true that Todd Walters noticed that and he was working at REMAX in Atlanta, Georgia, and he flew up to see Craig? And here's what Craig did. I said, hey, Todd, here's how I do it. And Todd took the, here's how I do it, back to Atlanta, Georgia, and he became one of the top 10 real estate agents uh, in the country, in the United States, by just copying the Craig Proctor system. And then I said to Todd, hey, Todd, why don't you and I work together, because uh, we got so much demand for this, and you and I will focus on teaching other real estate agents from all over the United States and Canada what I did and what you've done. Who better to... Uh, help the other real estate agents copy what we did. And Todd and I have been doing that for 20 years. And we have real estate agents that we coach that have honestly been with us for over 20 years, many of them, uh, hundreds over 10 years with us that make millions and millions of dollars a year. Uh, now, Todd, I'm going to let you name drop some of the people that we uh, work with that we've been coaching for many, many years and the production level that they do. Mm -hmm. Sure. I remember uh, Nathan Clark first met him. He he came in as doing a couple of hundred grand as a as a real estate agent working a lot of hours. Now he does uh, six million dollars a year. That's not sales volume now. That's income. Uh, so living a good life. Tracy King um, met him uh, when he jumped into the system. It was Tracy, his um, his wife, and they had an assistant. They were doing about five hundred sixty thousand dollars at the time, but. A lot of people would say, why would somebody making half a million dollars be looking for, you know, some sort of change? And I was like, I don't know. I guess he wanted to make 10 million because that's what he does now. Uh, uh, Nancy Kowalik up in New Jersey uh, met Nancy. She was doing about $30,000 a year in, in income. Now she does $4 million a year in real estate income. Uh, Wally Kerr out in uh, uh, 
uh, in Oklahoma, met Wally. He was doing about 40 cells a year. Now he does 400 cells a year uh, while he does. It even works in in Quebec. Uh, Bertrand and R.G. DeSalt, when I met them, uh, they came to a meeting. They brought their own toaster oven to the first conference that they came to. They couldn't afford uh, to eat out, eat the food at the hotel. So they brought their own food and their own toaster oven. Uh, last year, they did over $10 million dollars. In the yeah, they, they had to take all our intellectual property, yes. obviously being in Quebec, and, and translate everything mm -hmm. from English to, to French. Yeah. Um, well, how about um, Shelly? Uh, Shelly Salas, yep. yep. Shelly and Louis Salas in, uh, in Texas, uh, right around the Fort Hood area. And we met Shelly. Uh, her and Louis were exhausted. They were selling 300 homes a year, but they were all REO listings, foreclosure listings. She hated it. She was making no money. The banks were putting pressure on her. She goes, how do I get out of this mess? And I was like, well, we have the answer for you. Okay, so uh, last year she does 900 home sales, no REOs, and uh, she's the number one Hispanic real estate agent in the entire United States of America as a direct result of the same system that um, that you guys get to show up here on these podcasts and learn about uh, for sure. Uh, Rudy Kasuma in California, remember when we met Rudy, he uh, had to send his kids to Indonesia to stay with his family because he was so busy as a real estate agent. Yeah, he came over from Indonesia, English, uh, had to learn the language, uh, got into real estate, and yeah. uh, I still have a little trouble understanding him, but his English is way better now. Uh, but what kind of uh, what kind of business does Rudy have? Yeah, he was he's the number one REMAX agent in the state of California, by the way. Yeah, which would make him number one, you know, in the top five in the entire world. Right. And uh, I think last year he's around twenty million dollars. Built a sizable real estate business, as you guys can imagine. These are not sales volume numbers. Now these are income numbers. We don't talk sales volume here. We talk real income, real money, and uh, no smoke and mirrors. But look, um, there are hundreds of these uh, people. Uh, myself, when I met, when I got into a real estate, I was bankrupt and homeless. And I'm not, I'm not sugarcoating that at all literally bankrupt, literally homeless. I just got married to make it worse, but it actually made it better because my I was able to shack up in my father-in-law's basement. And it was a basement now, Craig, with crickets and spiders and stuff. So, uh, you know, I'm desperate to try to figure life out at that moment in time. I was 21 years old when this was going on. And uh, so I stumbled around for a couple of years, you know, trying to work hard, figure it out. Get involved with Craig Proctor early, early, early in my career. By 1996, I was a millionaire real estate agent. So, um, um, and there's so many stories like that. And it's really cool and fun to watch the emotions of, of these real estate agents who are just people trying to live life and, and the best they can and, and make, their, make other people's lives better. To watch their stories and the emotions come out when they tell their stories about their journey of going from, you know, rags to rich agent stories um, using this amazing system uh, that that you let out into the world, Craig. You didn't have to do that, by the way. You know, you could have just kept on going as a real estate agent, doing your thing, top 10 for Remax for 15 freaking consecutive years. And uh, you could have just done that, you you know, with your team. But at some point, I guess you decided, you know what, I'm going to I'm going to make this available to other real estate. I'm glad you did. And I know a lot of people are. So thank you. And here you are still today uh, doing free podcasts and giving tons of value away uh, at no cost. You know, like you even offered a free report today, for goodness sake. Yeah, let's get back to uh, how you can get that free report. Just type your email address uh, into the comments and we'll get you the information on what we talked about today. It's free. Uh, no one's going to call you or hound you. We're just giving you good information here. And then you can decide whether we're the right uh, coaches and trainers for you. Um, also, don't forget, you can book a call with my team. It's called a breakthrough call, not a sales pitch in any way. We just show you what we've got, what, how we do this, uh, what the end result, the benefit would you for you would be. If someone could type into the comments, proctorcall.com. So just my name, proctorcall.com. That's a clickable link. If you type in proctorcall.com, Click on that link and it'll take you to my day timer and you can book a day and a time that works for you. Schedule about 45 minutes. We'll mm -hmm. ask you a bunch of questions about your business and we'll show you how you can attract more buyers without cold calling or door knocking, without chasing people. People aren't answering the phone anyway, so you need to find a better way to be able to convert the leads. 
will help you improve your listing and buyer presentation, especially with buyers. You better be really good. You better understand exactly what to say to buyers because now you have to compel the buyer to pay you. You can't make a buyer work with you. You can't make a buyer pay you, but you can use the right language to compel the buyer to want to work with you and to pay you. How are you going to negotiate this deal? How are you going to get paid through the proceeds of sale? We lay it all out for you. Uh, how are you going to get listings? Okay, a lot of you are like, well, the heck with buyers, I'm, I'm going to concentrate on listings. Well, do you know how to get more of them? Do you know what it is to offer sellers? Do you know how to attract them? What media to use? Um, do you know how to sell their listing when you do get it? You can't rely on just jamming the house on MLS and letting some other agent do the work. You're actually going to have to have a system to sell your listings. Mm -hmm. All this will be covered. And we have the Toronto Craig Proctor event on Wednesday, April the 3rd. You can get information on that at craigproctor.com. Now, I'll also give you my email address. It's craig at craigproctor.com. You can directly email me, craig at craigproctor.com if you have any questions. Or feel free to type your questions into, into chat, into the comments right now. And mm -hmm. if we don't get to your questions while we're still live here, I promise you we'll follow up with them and we'll get back to you. But what are your thoughts on this, guys? Um, are you excited by this? Are you a little bit nervous by the changes? Kind of caught off guard? Um, does it make sense that you get somebody, the right person, to help you in your real estate career so you're not stumbling around in the dark. I know every real estate company promises training, right? It's, it's uh, you know, uh, we believe that when we get into real estate, Todd, that if we're a good person and we really uh, work hard and we know all the rules and we care about our clients, that that should be enough. Mm -hmm. But as you know, uh, many of you watching this right now are hardworking, good people who take care of your clients, who work hard. Uh, you're trying to represent their best interest and mm -hmm. things aren't going as well. There are lots of great agents that are struggling right now because they don't know how to create a steady stream of buyer and seller business where the buyers and sellers are contacting them. If you're buying leads from Zillow, okay, they're not answering the phone. If you can't reach them on the phone. You can't tell them who you are, what you got, what makes you different or better. It's dead. You've got to learn how to get the buyers and sellers to contact you. Yes, we know how to do that. You don't know how to do it. This is how we've created more millionaires than anybody else. It's not that you need to be a better agent. I know they try to tell you that. Oh, you need to be a better agent. You need the, the latest designations. You need more. Nope, you guys are good enough. What you need is better marketing. What you need is um, uh, hungry buyers and sellers. Uh, what do they say? Uh, um, if you starving want to start crowd. a yes, if you want to start a restaurant, make sure you your your restaurants in front of a starving crowd. That's what we have done here. How else can you guys explain how I get into real estate? Like Todd, I wasn't homeless, but I was living in my parents' basement. Uh, my father was a real estate agent. My dad even said, "Son, don't do it." When I said to my dad, "I want to get into real estate," he said, "Don't do it." Um, I said, "Why?" You know, I thought he would be excited about getting out of the house, right? He's like, well, look, son, to be honest, you've never really stuck with anything in your life, which is true. I dropped out of college. I dropped out of university. I'm like, okay, dad, you got me on that. I, I haven't really stuck with anything. He goes, you've never sold anything in your life. You have no experience in sales. That was true. I'd never sold anything in my life. No experience in sales. Uh, he says, you don't know anything about marketing. Well, that was true. I didn't know anything about marketing. So I did the opposite of what my dad instructed me to do. I got into real estate anyway. And my dad was right because I made the same mistake that all you guys made. You get into the business, you look around at all the other real estate agents, you do what the broker tells you to do. You look around what all the other agents are doing and you copy it. And that means cold calling, door knocking, buying leads, Dang facing cool rejection, course. getting hung up on. It is difficult. Now I'm the same agent. I'm the same real estate agent in the same marketplace. I didn't switch marketplaces. And within 24 months, boom, I change my opera, I change my, my mindset, I change my marketing, and I become the number one REMAX agent, not in the country, in the world. I'm still in my 20s. I'm still living in my parents' basement. It's marketing, folks. Now, the good news, you might be like, well, who cares? That's good for you, Craig. No, it's good news for all of you, because what I've proven and what Todd has proven for 30 years is this is totally duplicatable. Yeah. 
Todd's living in a basement in Atlanta. I'm living in a basement in Toronto. He's <laughs> like, well, uh, I'm going to go see what this, he went to his Remax broker and his Remax broker is like, yeah, go see Craig. So uh, Todd comes up to Toronto. Uh, we hang out. He starts to model after what I'm doing and I'm happy to help him. Right. I'm like, here, Todd, uh, don't do it this way. Do it this way. Let's do it this way. And then all of a sudden, Todd is one of the top 10 agents in the country. OK, now we're going to teach everybody how to do it. Do you guys want to know how to do this? Let us know. Do you really want to be successful? Do you have a coach right now? Did your coach, did they or are they right now making millions and millions of dollars in commission income selling real estate? Of course not. Most of these trainers are pretenders. They didn't make millions and millions of dollars actually selling real estate like we did. And we didn't do it for a year. Todd and I did this for 25 years. Todd still has a real estate company. It's in behind him right now. Your home sold guaranteed realty. Get a coach that knows how to become a millionaire agent. Not like they're doing it. They've done it before. How many of you would agree it's very difficult for somebody that has not been successful in real estate to show you how to do something they have never done? Right? If you um, wanted uh, financial advice, would you want financial advice from somebody that's poor? Or would you rather have financial advice from somebody that's financially successful? This is what we bring to the table, folks real world experience. And that's why when you're listening to us, you're like, okay, here's a couple of guys that make sense. Again, mm -hmm. I know all your companies provide training. Who's, who's doing the training? People that failed at real estate. Having a coach, we had Gary Keller, uh, as you recall, uh, Todd, uh, the keynote speaker at a couple of our super Craig Proctor super conferences. Mm -hmm. We did one in, uh, in LA. Uh, what's that place called? Uh, Staples. LA Live there. Yeah. Yep. yep right. Staples. Okay. Yeah. LA Live. And Gary Keller was the keynote speaker there. And Gary Keller was talking about like, why would you want to do this business on your own? Like everything that you want to do, he said, is already been done by other people. You know, you don't have to have a creative bone in your body. You just got to be smart enough to find the people that are doing what you want and copy them. He said, that's what I did. So, he said it's a good idea to have a coach, that everyone should have a coach. And he said that he himself today, Gary Keller, still has his coaches. But he said the coach, who the coach is, really, really matters. Are you guys running around coachless? Or are you not particular about who your coach is? There's lots of advice on real estate. In fact, Todd, right now on YouTube, we could argue there's more how-to information on how to be successful as a real estate agent on YouTube. There's more information on the internet about how to be successful as an agent than ever before. Well, then why the hell are so many agents struggling? If, the, if it's true that there's more information online, more training and free information on how to be successful as a real estate agent, it's all free, it's online, there's never been as much of it. Why are so many agents failing? Because you're getting the wrong information. Okay, the fact that there's so much information out there, you're overwhelmed with advice from people that have never successfully done uh, what they're talking about. Now, there are a few of them out there, but you're not going to find anyone with a better track record than us for helping people and creating millionaires. So um, drop in your email address and we'll get you the information on today. Okay, the report is how to get listings in this volatile market. And we'll talk about how to work the buyer ends with these changes. Book a call with me. It's free. It costs you zero dollars. What do you got to lose? Zero dollars. What are you doing with 45 minutes of your time that's better than talking to my team for zero dollars? You're not obligated to do anything. Let us show you what your business could look like. If you don't like it, you can hang up at any time. But once you hear this, you can't unhear it. Mm -hmm. Give us an opportunity to explain this to you. Okay, if you want to book the call, you go to proctorcall.com. And for those of you that are really ambitious, you jump on a plane, you get in your car and you drive to Toronto and you meet Todd and I and 400 superstars on April the 3rd. How do I register? You go to craigproctor.com, click on super conference. Todd Walters, 
any final remarks before we wrap this up? Yeah, sure. So um, I pulled up my phone here. I've got a, I got a lot of text messages. And when I say a lot, like it's, it's a decent amount from real estate agents that have been forwarding me um, screenshots and messages that they've been getting from customers in the marketplace. Uh, here's one uh, from a Craig Proctor member who sent me a screenshot uh, just yesterday of a homeowner that they've been talking to about getting their home on the market. This is what the homeowner said. It says, hi, Jamie. I uh, hope you're having a good day. What are the new rules for brokerage fees? A friend of mine just sent me this article. Thanks. And the seller's name. You know what article they sent? Was the article on the NAR settlement and changes uh, in how real estate commissions are being paid uh, in, in the marketplace today. So it's happening. This is a conversation that homeowners are having with themselves uh, and with the inside their at their dining room tables, watching the news and reading things online. Oh, it's like a that. terrible PR for the real estate industry. Absolutely terrible. Mm -hmm. You know, you watch uh, CNBC, you watch any any business, any news. It's like, oh, uh, real estate agents, uh, you know, found guilty of conspiracy, uh, you know, basically ripping off. And how many of your sellers you sold a house to in the last couple of years have received direct mail from attorneys, from lawyers saying, if you sold a home in the last couple of years, you, uh, uh, yeah, you, you know, you uh, can be part of this class action. So basically uh -huh. you got ripped off terrible mismanagement yeah. of this for our industry. But you know what? We'll get through this. At the end of the day, buyers still want to buy homes and they still want to help buying homes. And sellers could always have sold their homes themselves, but they've chose to have a real estate agent represent them and market them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now there's a lot of real estate agents. If you want to be chosen, you've got to know how to stand out from the crowd. You've got to know what to do, what to say, and how to handle these transactions. And you need to learn how to negotiate your fees so you can maximize your profit. Mm -hmm. You work hard in this industry. You're away from your family. Uh, we sacrifice a lot to be real estate agents, to be there and take care of all the details so the clients can live their life. Mm -hmm. Come and get coached up by us or at least get some information. You're watching this for a reason. Okay, Todd and I have been on here now for about 45 minutes. If you're still watching this, that means you're interested. Make sure you drop in your email address. We'll get you some information. And I want to thank everybody for watching this. Uh, Todd Walters, thank you so much for spending your valuable time with us here today. And uh, hopefully we'll see many of you in Toronto on April the 3rd. Uh, but if not, if you have any questions at all, drop your comments in and we will get back to all of them. And thank you so much for watching the Craig Proctor Real Estate Show. Take care. Thank you, Craig. Hi, this is Craig Proctor. Hey, I really hope you enjoyed that video. And listen, I've got a lot more information for you to help you grow your real estate business. You see, several times a week, I record new videos and I load them onto this YouTube channel. What I'd like you to do if you'd like to access them are two important things, and both are totally free. Number one is I'd like you to subscribe to this channel. You're gonna see a little subscribe button for you to click on. And if you don't already have an account with YouTube, it's free for you to set it up. It's really easy, it's free, but you've got to subscribe to this channel. And the most important thing is to ring the little bell right next to the subscribe button. And that's gonna let you know every time I load new money-making videos to help you grow your real estate business. So make sure you subscribe right now, you ring the little bell, and we'll see you on the next video.